And now, uh, Luca Del Monte. Okay, so thank you. Good morning, everybody. And uh, after having heard uh, a lot of uh, inspiration from cooperation and alliance in space, uh, now I would like to spice up a little bit uh, the discussion about research and development, uh, introducing a healthy but rough competition for challenges. So, you know, solution for challenges historically comes also in Terralia from prize schemes. And today I would like to discuss and present to you a little bit this tool that is a tool that we intend to spur innovation in Europe. Now, there are main, mainly two big categories of, uh, of prizes. Let's say there are the ex ante and the ex post prize. Mm -hmm. Simple example of an ex post prize is the Nobel Prize, where the sponsor acknowledge the result and uh, provide an hours. But there are also very significant and interesting examples of ex ante uh, contest, prize context, and one of the most important and probably the first and most uh, and the historical one was born just here in London. It's called the Longitude Prize. Uh, that was initiated by the British Parliament in the 17th century in order to solve the problem of the determination of the longitude. As you can imagine, at that time, was an extremely important uh, uh, problem to be addressed in order to uh, improve the safety uh, of uh, navigation. So, um, there are also notable, uh, notable prizes, uh, ex ante, like the Billiard Prize, that was pro is probably less known, but it's very interesting, because uh, it was a prize launched to uh, find a replacement uh, for the ivory that was used in the billiard balls uh, up to the 18th century. And actually, the result of this prize today is, well, let's say, a derivation of this is plastic, as we know. So you can understand uh, the importance of these uh, uh, tools. Let's say the advantage is, is uh, certainly a stimulus factor where we encourage basic research, we spur the initial development of a new industry, um, we focus uh, efforts on problems which are almost invisible or considered to be improbable. The resource retrieval and asset retrieval includes, for instance, identifying um, promising teams of scientists that uh, may, uh, may provide interesting solutions in the future, or also IPR, intellectual property rights. So the efficiency is the fact that the funds uh, are used in an effective uh, way, and uh, let's say in particular when uh, we think of reducing the risks of public investment that you know is a very sensitive item. In general terms, we have also an objective uh, of uh, outreach in the sense that uh, this prize may be used to raise the general public awareness on a given sector, in particular in space in this case, and the sponsorship of these uh, prizes may benefit uh, from promotional and marketing tools. So this is just an example of prizes that historically have been used in the, in the space domain. Uh, we cannot go through all of them, obviously, but just the first, um, probably one of the most well-known one is the Ansari Prize that was uh, launched in 1996 for the first uh, non-institutional uh, vehicle uh, to be able to reach uh, the 100 kilometers that, you know, is the conventional altitude at which space is uh, set to, to start. And this has been, uh, uh, has been won, actually has been awarded to a consortium organized and led by Paul Orlen uh, from Microsoft, one of the co-founder of Microsoft together with Bill Gates, and Bart Rutten, that is the world famous engineer, aeronautical engineer. And um, so with this prize, that is, uh, I think was $10 million at that time, actually the, the, the real expenditure to, to reach this, uh, this prize was in the order of magnitude of 100 million. So actually 90 millions were leveraged 
by the, 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 the competitors, the winning team indeed, to, uh, to reach the objective. But the net result is that uh, this has given birth to a new market, especially uh, now uh, we are seeing this uh, developing in the US in terms of space tourism. Another very interesting one is the DARPA, is the DARPA prize. Here we, we have not uh, put uh, this in, uh, in our slide, but uh, it's, um, it's also the defense, that is the defense sector that is uh, using uh, this kind of prize in this moment. DARPA DARPA is the Defense Agency for Advanced Research Project in the US, and uh, one of the most interesting prizes that is currently ongoing is for robotic, uh, the development of robotic capabilities uh, controlled by humans to provide relief uh, in, uh, in case of, uh, uh, of um, crisis operation. Now, these uh, prizes are used extensively in the US. Uh, the characterization of the prize is a very difficult uh, exercise and because you have to be able to identify the right area where uh, uh, you want to 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 identify and uh, and uh, launch uh, your competition because not all areas not all domains are suitable for this they they need to have a, a very important communication and uh, outreach potential and they have to be suitable also to develop uh, upstream and downstream markets as a consequence so for us also an objective would be to, to mix uh, up the space community with the non-space community, thus adding diversity and increasing the chance for uh, uh, innovation. Now, with these introductions, just to tell you that ESA started reflecting about the possibility of establishing an ESA grand challenge. And um, the rationale for us is that uh, uh, these prizes are powerful tools uh, to develop uh, a new breed of European entrepreneurs in the space domain. Uh, today we have seen uh, some uh, testimony and witness of European startups in this domain, but we see that we are still lagging well behind the US. If you have the opportunity to have a trip in the Silicon Valley, you will understand what I mean. So um, in this respect, uh, it's, uh, it's a task of the agency, we believe, uh, to, to help creating the conditions for, for these new startups to grow and to develop. And we think that price uh, would be certainly um, highly leveraged uh, and incentivized competition would be very useful in developing space entrepreneurship space. Um, ESA is not new at all. In prize and hours, we have uh, uh, already a very uh, long list of prizes that uh, are run and operated by the agency. However, we must say that so far, the, the, it's uh, usually they are related to a very limited amounts um, of the perks, let's say, of the prize. And um, so we we also facing potential issue of uh, geo return, and uh, we think that the, there is a, a very limited communication and outreach uh, impact potential in this case. So what we want to do is actually opening up this opportunity by involving non-space partners. Actually, what uh, considering, let's say, taking into account the current financial situation, um, we, we are thinking of uh, enlarging the basis. Uh, um, and uh, we think that the ESA prizes funding could come mainly from partnership with private space and non-space industrial sponsors. We have seen before the Audi logo. Uh, actually, this is a, a very, very interesting example of what may happen in the future. So, and we hope that this will also help the startups attracting further investment from business angels and venture capitals or from enterprises from other verticals than space. So, just concluding, unfortunately, I'm not today in the position to announce uh, already a new ESA Grand Challenge Prize, but what I can do is that I can tell you that uh, our member states are starting reflecting about that. Uh, we are now in the process uh, of discussing this uh, with our delegations in the next uh, few weeks to come, actually. And uh, if we are successful in this endeavor, we may be able to announce something already at the upcoming council at ministerial level. Having said that, I am open to question if it is so the case. Thank you.